Depreciating from past principles is what we are going to handle in this lesson. Members, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, depreciating from past principles, you can either use the function notation or the idea of small changes in x and small changes in y. Let us first focus on the function notation. Then the next lesson we shall see how we use the small changes. Okay, depreciation from past principles, we can use the function notation or the small changes. Consider a function y equal to f of x passing through a point A. If h is a small change in x, then remember how y is this. If we have a small change in x, so it means that on x we are adding something small. So it's that if I have a small change in x, it's going to also affect y. So if x is plus h, then if x from this becomes this. It means that even this function is going to be affected. So, I have now two points. The one of x with a small chain, when it has a small chain, it, its corresponding value of y is this. Without a small chain, its y is that. Now, assume that our function is this. Now, if I draw a line passing through points A and B, you don't know how we get a gradient of a line. To get a gradient of a line, you get chain in y over chain in x. Now, Get our y over chain in x. Now I get this minus this function minus the corresponding value in these points. So I get this minus the corresponding y in the other point. I also get x minus the corresponding x in the other point. Now from here you can simplify that. If I subtract this from this, this h will cancel, and then this x will cancel. I'll be remaining with h only. But remember the same. In this point, if h is a small chain in x, it means that this chain in x is equal to our h. So meaning that now the h is going to be a small chain. They are going to come back. Now, you start. If this small chain in x is very small, it means that it's chain as that small chain is very small, then it is zero. So that now this point is going to change small, 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 small. At a certain point, it's going to be here. And so that now, as x is this small chain is so small, the limit as y as x, the other x tends to zero. Now this chain in y, which we said is the gradient, is going to be the derivative at this point here. Now, so that if x the small chain is small, it means that we are almost not moving from this point. Remember, move from this point to this because x is the small chain. But now, if the chain is so small that we are almost here, you will see that the, at this point, the gradient of this line is the same as the gradient of this curve at this point. Meaning that at this point, when x, the, the small chain is zero, it's all extending to zero, very small. Now, the limit in the chain in y over chain in x of that line is going to be y in x of this curve here. Now, if I introduce this limit to this side, I also decide from here. I'm coming from here. Is this when I introduce this limit, both sides you see, and now we say it. Our delta x tends to zero also the side. But the same delta x is the same as our h. That's why I'm putting here my h from this point here. Then remember, when we said that we put it that when this is small, is very small, then this the limit in this function is going to be the y dx, the full derivative. But remember, if y is a function of x. So see when you differentiate y, you should x. You say to differentiate the function, you should that. So our dy x is equal to this in this limit. So this is what we call the function notation. Let us see how we can use it. Differentiate the following from past principles. Now what we do, the one that's given this and this. What we do for one, we say relate. Remember this one is finding the function f of x. So relate this be our f of x. B x squared. Now, you see that we need f of x which we have now. Also, we need f of x with a small change in x. So now, it means that if my f of x receives a small change, it means that now, even this x, I'm going to add h. We get x now plus h, the whole square. x is the one which is changing 
So if it changes, remember it had a power at home, at the old part. So now here, here we expand this bracket, and as we expand this bracket, our f of x plus h will be x squared plus 2xh, then plus h squared. Expanding this bracket from here, here. Now, we come and we substitute in our formula there. That our the derivative we want is the limit over h. Now, what we do, we just substitute. We have f of x, we have also this in our formula. So now our f prime of x is going to be the limit as h tends to 0 of now this is here. Then minus our f of x, x squared. The whole thing over h as simple as that. So we have some suited in our formula there. And from there, so that this x and this they vanish. And then we model this so that now my f prime of x. Okay, from here, so that what we are meaning with is the limit as h tends to 0 of 2xh plus x squared over h. Now it's that where we can divide it through, okay, we can factorize out this h out. So this will be now the limit as h tends to 0. Now it's that my h is common if I multiply out h to x plus h the whole over h. Now it's that now this one cancels like that. Now it's that my f prime of x is going to be now the limit as h tends to 0 of now ready with x plus h. Now, at this step, it means that when you substitute where this h, when you put a 0, this limit will come now our to the liberty. So now my f prime of x is going to be now 2x plus h, which is 0. Now, when I substitute in where this h, if I put in a 0, now this limit disappears, so you only have this. Remember that our derivative of our f of x, remember it means that when we shake this, we get 2x. So from there is that our f prime of x will be 2x like that. It means that now when we shake this, we get 2x. And so that means in the power rule, this is very right. When we shake this, we get 2x. Now, to warn you, you see this limit, some people tend to forget this limit and they leave it out. If you forget that any step here, before this, you get 0 out of 0. Always be careful with this limit as h tends to 0. We only lose this one, this appears. If we are in h, you substitute at 0. That's why this one is disappear. So the limit, whenever you put where the h, you put a 0, then this one will disappear at that step. Okay, when I come to example 2, and number 2, we had x cubed minus 4x. Still so what we do, we say, let our f of x be x cubed minus 4x. We need now our small change, x, so x plus, we say for is x, our small change. It comes now, x plus x cubed, then minus 4 into, it's x that is receiving a small change, plus h, like that. Now I think you know how we can expand this, we can use a Pascal's triangle. So using the Pascal's triangle, this is going to be x cubed plus 3, x squared h, plus 3, x, x squared then plus a cubed, then minus. Of course, me, I know how to use it. So you also try to use it. Now, let us expand this side of this, 4x, then minus this and this, 4h. What does the first, first triangle say? 
I think I have covered that lesson. It means that that campus was going to before you come to that. Oh, because this is three brackets, you can say x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Then you expand slowly. Okay, now if I'm substituting my form now, there, the limit. Then we say that something is disappearing. Which one? This one is disappearing with this. Then also this is disappearing with this. As simple as that. So what we are making with is that the things we are making with, our edge is common there. So now my edge prime of x becomes the limit as h tends to zero of the prime of h. We make it x squared plus 3xh and minus a 4. The whole over h. Now we see that. Now this h can cancel with this. And now we see the only thing that we made with is my f prime of x equal to 2. The limit as h tends to 0 of 3x squared plus. 3xh minus 4. Now it means that the remaining state is where the state is substitute at 0. So now my f prime of x will be now. The moment we substitute in a 0 in this function, now this limit disappears. 3x squared plus 3x into 0 and minus 4, which will give us this will give us a 0. So we shall make it 3x squared. For as our answer. So that means that the moment we differentiate f prime of x, we shall get with x squared minus 4. And minus is that when we use power of this, we get 3x squared minus 4. And that's the answer there. So, members, that's how we use the function notation. I wish you well.